Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. Basically since the beginning of the 4K revolution that's been occurring for the last couple of years, we have been trying to cover it uh, as best as we can, starting with the Seiki 50 inch 4K TVs that were released at a low cost of like $1,500, going through the multi-stream transport 4K monitors, and now into the world of low cost 4K displays. Today next to me we have the Philips 288P6L, which is a 28 inch 4K single stream 60 hertz monitor. It's very similar uh, in terms of features and specifications that you'll find the ASUS PB287Q, uh, the Samsung U28D590D, uh, and I think Acer has one as well. I can't remember the model number off the top of my head. Uh, but a lot of these monitors probably all built on the same panel and they all have very similar specifications. You're looking at uh, 3840 by 2160 resolution, support for 60 hertz refresh rates as long as you have a DisplayPort 1.2 capable graphics card, which I think most anybody that's interested in a 4K monitor uh, will, will likely have. Um, I'm gonna talk about the things I like about this monitor first. The first thing that you'll notice is that the stand on the Philips display is actually pretty good. It has a lot of features. It doesn't have a lot of wobble to it. Uh, one of the original ones we looked at, the Samsung, I think 4K, had a lot of wobble to its stand. Um, but this has, you know, you've got your height adjustment, you've got your tilt and angle adjustment, you've got rotation, you can switch it into a portrait mode. Uh, the stand is, is well featured and it has Visa support on it as well should you want to disconnect it from the stand and mount it to your own uh, structure if you want to. Uh, the viewing angles on it are again kind of on par with what we've seen in the Asus and Samsung displays. It is a TN monitor so they're not fantastic viewing angles but for TN monitors they're actually pretty good. The top viewing angle and the left and the right are actually pretty good with, uh, uh, I'd say, mid-range brightness levels. The bottom is the one where you get the color inversion relatively quickly, but I would argue that the bottom viewing angle is also the least important of the four that, uh, that you're concerned about. Physically, I also like the way the monitor looks, the stand, the, the kind of bezel and everything. It's not a super thin bezel, so it's not great for, say, multi-monitor uh, configurations, but uh, it looks professional, it looks high-end, and you know it looks like a, a 4K display should look. I think in most people's opinion. It also has a lot of good connectivity options. It has DisplayPort, obviously 1.2, that's the one that will support 4K at 60 hertz, but if you need to, you can connect DVI, uh, HDMI, or even VGA. It actually has support for a VGA connection on this, uh, which means it does have an internal scaler, which will lead to uh, the negative part that we'll talk about at the end. You also have a four port USB hub on here that has two USB 3.0 ports and two USB 2.0 ports, as well as a, uh, a one of those yellow ports that indicates that it will charge your phone at a higher speed and probably while uh, the display is in standby mode. There is no power brick. It's implemented into the back of the display, which is a nice feature, except uh, they decided to use one of those cloverleaf style plugs as opposed to a standard, which just is kind of a complication. Basically, you have to find a replacement if you, should you happen to lose it or, or damage the one that came in the box. It does have two uh, stereo speakers on the bottom. They are monitor speakers. They're okay. They're actually better than some of the other uh, low-cost monitor speakers that I have heard in the past, but they're not a replacement for any kind of actual even 2.1 channel speakers that you likely already have with your PC. In terms of image quality, again, viewing angles and all that are very similar to the ASUS model, uh, very similar to the Samsung, but Philips does something kind of interesting. Each of their monitors actually ships with this sheet that is a color uniformity data sheet, and each monitor is actually calibrated before shipping uh, to as it says here, make sure the color accuracy is the average Delta E less than three for 6,500K uh, uh, white balance and uh, luminance uniformity between 93 and 105%. So um, I would say that this was uh, probably the, the, the best feature of the display. You know, we hooked up our, our colorometer testing and it was by far the most accurately <coughs> pre-calibrated display of any of the 4K monitors we have looked at to date. So that's actually a big plus. So if you're somebody who does a lot of professional photo editing or video editing, uh, but you don't have a colorometer, you don't have the way to kind of uh, do color matching, this might be your best option for that in terms of uh, out of box experience. I will say that uh, the negative in, in all of this is that uh, when you're running this at a non 4K resolution or even at not 60 Hertz refresh rate, the color accuracy does change dramatically, right? If you run this at 1080p on the desktop, or even if you run it at 4K at 30 Hertz, 
The darks are, are, are much worse. Uh, you get a lot of color issues. Uh, I'm not really sure why that is. Clearly the scaler is kind of shifting things around at that point, whereas maybe when you're running at 4K 60 hertz, it's kind of uh, bypassing it to some degree. But keep that in mind. It wasn't necessarily apparent while gaming, um, but just because there's so much more stuff going on. But looking at a desktop, it became very apparent when you switch between those different modes. So there's a lot to like. It is $649 4K display. There is one kind of major problem, though, for people that want to do gaming. Um, we measured latency on this monitor at upwards of 50 milliseconds, which is, you know, essentially three frames of latency uh, from additional from mouse input to what you actually see on the screen. We did that test with a CRT display connected to the same graphics card and you have timers running on both monitors simultaneously. Um, and the reason that's noteworthy is that uh, the ASUS PB287Q as well as um, the, uh, like the ASUS ROG Swift and uh, other monitors are showing zero milliseconds, almost no latency addition in that display pipeline. Um, the Dell 3008 2560 by 1600 monitor is kind of one of those well-known monitors that's very high quality, except that it adds in between 30 and 40 milliseconds of latency into your display pipeline as well. So this is actually coming at worse than that, and it's something that Alan even noticed before we were playing a game. He kind of noticed it on the desktop. So if you're very, very sensitive to that type of stuff, uh, it's something to be aware of. Uh, if, you're a, if you're a PC gamer and you want to use this display for gaming purposes, you probably uh, will want to skip the Philips model and look towards some of those other 4K options that are available on the market. Uh, and for desktop users, though, you know, if, if, if you don't think that input latency is going to bother you and you are more concerned with something like color uniformity and, and out-of-box color accuracy, the Philips uh, 288P6L seems like a pretty good option. It is available in stock at lots of locations for $649, which is uh, the exact same price as the ASUS 4K display and about $50 more than the Samsung U28D590D. So it is a very competitive market. There are other options out there for you if you are concerned about that latency. Uh, and we have questions into Philips about that latency, why they have it and other monitors do not. Uh, so hopefully they'll have some answers for us in uh, the not too distant future. And if we get that, we will update you guys here for sure. So go to PCPer.com, check out the written review there. We'll have more pictures and, and descriptions and all, you know, more details on what that latency is and how we tested it if you are curious about that specifically. But for now, I'm Ryan Shrout. We'll see you next time. Thanks.